Hey guys, today on this video we're going to talk about magnesium glycinate as the supplement also known as magnesium bisglycinate or also pronounced glycinate. A, this is a very popular um, form of magnesium that is a very well tolerated, great overall form for a lot of many, uh, a lot of different reasons. Um, with that being said, not all supplements are created equal, so I'm also going to talk about some of the ins and outs of what to look for in magnesium glycinate, why some raw materials are better than others. But quickly, let's go over why this is important. Because magnesium, as you know, is involved in over 600 different biochemical enzymatic reactions, meaning it's a cofactor or a catalyst for enzymatic activity. Without enough magnesium, these cofactors could not work as, as efficiently or properly as they should. So we need magnesium as much as we can. Unfortunately, with our food supply, with our depleting factors, we don't get enough magnesium from our diet. And to stay in balance, supplements are a great tool to kind of bridge that gap. Um, so I have been using magnesium glycinate for a long time. I typically do this before bed because magnesium glycinate is great for calming. Uh, magnesium in general is great for calming. It's kind of been called like the relaxed mineral, the chill pill, etc. But when you pair it with glycine, which is a neuroinhibitory amino acid, you have a kind of a synergistic effect between the two. Um, glycine is calming to the nervous system. It's an inhibitory neuron. Um, so it doesn't excite the neurons as well, or it shouldn't. Um, so if you give glycine before bed, it can help with restless leg. It can help with anxiety. It can help with stress. We know that one of the first minerals used up during stress is magnesium. And not having enough magnesium on board during stressful events can actually further deplete you. I mean, so it's really a vicious cycle of magnesium and stress and how magnesium gets depleted. We need more magnesium to balance out the stress and keep us more resilient. And if we don't have enough stress overburdens us, causes more chronic um, inflammation, causes more detriment to our body. So it's a really vicious cycle. We have to balance stress as best we can. So in a study that I want to talk about, um, this is a case report. So they had rapid recovery from major depression using magnesium treatment. Um, in the study, this was, um, they had, were given magnesium for seven days and they're actually given 125 milligrams to 300 milligrams per meal and an additional uh dose at bedtime so pretty high dose guys that's typical more uh typically more than what you find in a um supplement facts box so they were giving a lot of magnesium glycinate and tornate this say blend and at the end of the trial they found that they had rapid recovery from major depression. Now, this was just a case report. You know, of course, they need more participants to, to show this. And unfortunately, in the studies that we see is um, we don't actually see a lot of the magnesium glycinate form used specifically. Usually, they use other forms, other cheaper forms like magnesium oxide. And as you know, we're not a big fan of magnesium oxide. It's very poorly absorbed. Anything that's in the inorganic form, that's a non-living uh, matter, See, the fact is magnesium has to be bonded to something to um, to be you know utilized. Magnesium is highly reactive. It's got a 2 plus positive charge on the periodic table. So it's going to find something to react with. And when you chelate it with something like a, an amino acid glycine, you're going to get a chelated molecule, which actually has some different absorption um, through the peptide receptors. And so this can actually enhance, you know, greatly enhance magnesium absorption versus inorganic forms like oxide, hydroxide, and carbonate. Those inorganic forms typically have a weak bond. They get quickly dis disassociated in the gut. Um, they caught, they are known to cause loose stools. Um, so I, frankly, I don't really recommend those forms, but if you're on a budget, those could actually work. But for most people, Magnesium glycinate is a form that I recommend. Now, of course, this is not new news by any means. A lot of people are recommending magnesium glycinate. But not all supplement manufacturers are making the same magnesium glycinate, unfortunately. As you know, a lot of companies in the retail space can cut corners. And so it's really hard. It's really important to find a supplement company that is one has your best interest, is doing a lot of quality testing, striving to get the best raw materials available. And some of the best raw materials available, in my opinion, for magnesium are from Albion or Ball Chem Labs. Um, they are a premier manufacturer of true chelated minerals. What this means is that they truly are bonding um, magnesium and glycine together. So when you see bisglycinate, bi means two, they're actually putting 
two molecules of glycine. So they're putting two molecules, one glycine, one glycine, stacking onto magnesium. And they're forming a, a, a bond, a covalent bond, and they are making these um, bonds very strong. And the glycine is also very small. So it's going to, you know, withstand stomach acidity, go to the peptide receptor intact, and it doesn't usually cause that bowel flushing effect. Now, I am seeing a trend with some uh, retail brands of magnesium. They're saying they're magnesium glycinate, but they're also buffering it with magnesium oxide, which I don't which I don't like because if you're buffering it with magnesium oxide, you're putting a cheaper raw material in there to bump up the, maybe the elemental value of the magnesium. But if you're looking for a high quality product, they are not gonna, they're not going to bump up the magnesium content. They're going to use a high quality raw material. Usually we'll say like tracks the, re, the real amino acid chelate system. And this is going to be a truly reacted mineral, a uh, truly bonded mineral, a true magnesium glycine. I've also seen other companies that don't use that, um, that brand I just, uh, raw material I just uh, referenced. And they'll say, we put magnesium and glycine in a blender, hopefully it mixed together and hopefully they bonded. Well, so, some might bond, but you can't guarantee that. So I always say, go with a trusted company that's using these premier raw materials. Um, there's also some case reports of people getting anxiety from glycinate so there are maybe some potential side effects to get from this but in my experience most people who have anxiety or stress get a lot of benefit from magnesium glycinate so there are always exceptions to this but if you find that um, a form doesn't work for you maybe glyc may maybe magnesium glycinate doesn't work for you find a form that does it's fine to rotate different magnesiums as long as you're staying in balance find this works for you and stick with it anyways i hope you found this video on magnesium glycinate beneficial it's one of the you know forms that I take nightly, pretty routinely, um, and it has really helped me a lot. And so the blend I take in the morning is malate and glycinate currently, and then I take a glycinate before bed, and I also take magnesium L3 and 8, you know, sometime at night or during intense focus, writing sessions, thinking sessions, etc., because that's a more cognitive enhancement type of magnesium. But anyways, if, if you're thinking about trying a magnesium and don't know where to start, I think magnesium and glycinate is a great form to try. With all the different forms out there, uh, sometimes it can, be, it can be very confusing on what to, what to take, but don't be alarmed. Magnesium glycinate is a great form. And again, it's very, very good for calming, good for stress, good for anxiety, and also good for sleep. And just because it's good for sleep doesn't mean it'll put you to sleep, so you can still take it during the day just fine. I know several people that take, you know, 300 milligrams during the day, and they, they, have, they don't feel sleepy. But it, what it does is it helps you relax. So it helps you get into that more of that parasympathetic state, which is the opposite of that sympathetic, some of that fight or flight um, tone, and it can calm down your body. There's actually another study on restless leg with pregnant women. Pregnant women are, you know, are known to get more um, restless leg, leg cramping, etc., especially in the later stages of pregnancy. And so they did a study using magnesium glycinate, actually, and they found that they had reductions in restless leg. So magnesium is generally safe to take during pregnancy, but of course, always ask your doctor. And I'm Dr. Robert Fredrickson. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Share it with a friend who needs to know more about the quality forms of magnesium. And again, it's not all about supplements. You have to you have to eat the right foods, magnesium-rich foods. You have to drink uh, mineral-rich water and then use supplements as a bridge to stay in optimal balance for life. My new book, Magnesium Answers, goes over this in detail. I'm very proud of it. Um, I think it really, you know, outlines the the crisis of magnesium deficiency, why so many people are, are deficient today, what we can do about it to get out of deficiency, and how to stay in balance for life. Anyways, if you found this video helpful, please let me know in the comments. Please share it with a friend, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.